Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel as we continue our journey on building our travel request power apps application. In the last two videos we talked about SharePoint. We built our SharePoint um, list which will be our data source for our power apps. We also built a, a travel request approval where we Gonna, you, we're going to use that and integrate it with our application so we can control who can see what. We created a SharePoint group for team lead, manager, and senior manager, and we created item level permissions so that when the team lead or any or the manager or the senior manager, when they log into Power Apps, they only see what they're supposed to see. So um, in this video today, we're going to start to beard our solution, or before we get there, we're going to talk about solutions and if you remember in our very first video I talked about how we're going to do everything from a solution standpoint um, which is the best practice to build everything in a solution and just as a reminder what, of what a solution is I know I talked about it in our first video but I'll just go over it again because I think it's a very important concept to understand a solution is if you think of it like a container and it holds all your components that's needed for an app or business process and all these components they can include think you know they can include a canvas app or maybe it's a model driven app whatever your workflows you have tables forms etc now the purpose of this of a solution is to help you to organize component components in a structured way uh, and this is very useful when, it, and when you need to move it from one environment to another environment. So you can move from your development environment to your testing environment to your production environment. And if you have a staging environment, you can move it to your staging environment and then to your production environment. So it all depends on what your environment is um, at your place. Now, we have uh, different types of solutions. We have an unmanaged solution and a managed solution. And the managed solution is like the finalized package. You know, once, once it's imported into an environment, it can't be edited. And um, that's what it's basically used for. Once you distribute an app from one environment to another environment, you can't edit it. So. A unmanaged solution these are editable you can make changes to them and it's used during development phase you know so you can add remove or modify comp um, components in these solutions and if you think about it this is actually a this is actually a good thing because once you you know let's say I move and I'm going to show you um, in these series of videos once I move my solution my unmanaged solution because unmanaged is, is where it's in your in development environment once i move it into my production environment or staging you don't want it to be changed anymore right can you imagine making changes to your production application in that environment you know if if a user is using it and you make changes and you made a mistake you can bring down the application it can be a work stoppage because of something you did so that's why you want to make your changes in in your development environment, move it into the testing environment, test it, make sure it's okay. You can move it into the staging environment if you have it. You know, um, the staging environment is supposed to mimic the production environment. And then once everything is working in all of those different environments, then you move that final product into the production environment. And it would be in those environments after the development environment it becomes managed and you can't make changes to it you know so that's a that's a good thing now um i read of this analogy somewhere so think of let me bring this up here now this is a toolbox you know so think of a solution as a toolbox where you keep all your tools basically your components that's needed to build or fix something, you know, in our case, an app or process. And just like how a toolbox helps you organize and transport your tools, 
A solution helps you organize and manage your app components. You know, now I didn't have an analogy for like the manage or unmanaged, um, but just think of a solution as something that helps you to organize um, and helps you to manage your components. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and create ourselves a solution. Now, right up now, in your Power App, the App Maker, you know, I'm on a home page of make.powerapps.com. And in order to get to the solutions, right down here on the left hand side, we have the solutions icon. So if you click on that, and at the top you have new solution, let's create a new solution. And let's call this solution, I'm going to call this our travel request solution. And as you can see, it just concatenates the name, the display name and gives it a name. Now let's choose a publisher. I haven't created one yet, but let's create a publisher. So when you create a publisher, it, you have to pr provide um, this information here. So I'm going to say optimal training group. And I'm going to put here OTG, abbreviate it. Um, so this prefix here, this is a way to uniquely identify and to manage the comp components of your solution. So that way um, it makes it unique. Other solutions that are, that are there, it will help identify it uniquely um, from those other ones. So I'm going to just prefix mines with, uh, let's see, because it's going to make it distinct from any other ones. So let's see, I'm just going to say OTG. Why not? OTG, let's capitalize it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So this is a preview of a new object name. Okay. So that's my, that is the preview. So let me click save. Let me see what the contact tab is. Ah, I didn't provide any of that. So save. Okay, so it's saved. So now when I come back here to my to the publisher, it should be in there now. So there you go. So all of my solutions that I create, now I'm, I'm just going to put it underneath this publisher. And this is my, the, the version one. All right, so that's this helps to keep track of the version. So let me click create. All right, so now we are in our travel request solution. If I go back out, as you can see it's here now. So now when I come to this page, to the solutions box, there's my solution. I'm gonna click in there. And so now I have all of these different things here, these objects here. So let's go ahead and click new. So what I want to do now is before I go ahead and create my canvas app, I'm going to create a few variables. So let me see what's a good variable to create. So I'm going to create my travel, travel. I want to create the variables to my list. So let me make sure I get the right name. So, um, travel request so let me say travel request travel request i just remembered something too data source choose a connector parameter type site so let me provide the site first actually so travel request site now, I just realized I need to do something really quick. So when you have, so this site here will be my production environment, right? So I want to have a different site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sub site, which will be my, which will act as my test site. 
because you, you really want two different SharePoint sites. You don't want to use the same site as your production and your test because the list in here would be my, these two lists would be my production. So let's come over here to the sub site and let's create new, I mean, let's create new sub site. So I'm going to say, um, YouTube demo test. <laughs> and I'm just going to say why, why DT? I'll leave it as that. I want to say use unique permissions. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to click create. So, all right. So here is our site. And if you remember in our last video or two videos ago, I said that when you create a site, it automatically creates these groups for you, whatever you named your site. So as you can see, YouTube demo test it creates one for a test vid, um, visitors test mem members and then owners so visitors members and owners it creates this by default so i'm going to click ok and then while that is coming up i'm going to go back to my other site here's my travel list let's create a template so i'm going to come over here click on list settings and then we're going to click the save list as a template So save this as a template and I'm going to call this, this is my travel request. Now I can give this a different name. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to be using variables. Um, and my variables will hold whatever the list name in it is, uh, list name is. So as long as the list matches on both ends, as far as the, the columns and the data, you can have, it can have a different name, but anyway, I'll show you what that, what about, talked about that later. Okay, so travel request. I'm going to include the content. Click OK. All right. Let me go do the other one as well. So let me go back. So let me go to the list settings. Save list as a template. Now, if you don't see this save list as a template, you may have to talk to your, cause sometimes I think it's gone. It's not there by default. You may have to talk to the admin folks. I had to call, I had to, my site is hosted um, by a third party, not by Microsoft. So I had to call them and say, hey, can you please enable me so I can see, I could, cause it wasn't there by default. So they had to add it there for me. include okay all right so now that i have this it's now in my list template gallery so now within my sub site i can now um um grab this so let me come here let me go back to my sub site that i created here's my sub site and what i like to do because this is my test site or you know matter of fact i'm going to change this I want to say development, development, because this is my development site. And then what I like to do personally, because I do this at work is, so I don't get, I mean, it, it looks totally different from the other site. Um, I like to give it a different color, change the theme, theme up. Okay, that didn't do anything. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So on my test site to look completely different. All right. So now let me go to my list site contents. And I'm going to click on new list. And then I'm going to say 
create from existing list. So go to my YouTube demo site. Except I want, I want it with my content though. I, don't, I just don't want the, I just don't want the shell. Let me see. That's not there. Let me try back again here again. These are the two that I want, but I don't think it has the content. Let me see. So, eh. yeah, I need the content. Because if I do this, it just gives me the columns. Let me, I'm going to pause the video and figure out how to get my content. Okay. So, I'm in my YouTube demo development site. I'm going to come over here to click new. I'm going to come down to app. I remember doing this last week, I just remembered. So I'm gonna click on this classic experience because you can see my lists aren't here. So I'm gonna click on this classic experience. And if you remember the classic experience, this is what it looked like. And now you can, if I scroll through, I can find my list and there they are. And I think it should have my content. Um, call it the same thing travel request it doesn't have our content okay no problem uh that's okay oops let me go to app Classic experience. Travel request approval. Ah. Okay. Oh, there's my data. Okay. Maybe I, I probably didn't have data in my other one. Okay. It's okay. So now we, ha we have our two lists, travel request and our travel request approval. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to copy the site because we were in our solution. We were creating a variable. So let me come here. Let me go back to power apps. So now we're creating a travel request site. Dev site. Uh, I just say travel request site. So now the parameter that I'm picking is my site. So I need to pick my site first. And then I'm going to paste in here what the site is. That's the link to my subsite and I'm going to click save so this is my first variable and then I'm going to click create another variable as soon as it's up okay there it is so now I can go create my another variable and this is my environment variable we're going to create our travel request and this is my SharePoint list. And I want to create a data source. The connector I want to use is SharePoint. And then I want to use, I want a list. It says, choose your site. And this is why you need to create your site first. That's the variable I created. If I scroll down, new list value, and I want travel request. As you can see, my list are, you know, my list from this, my subside are there. So travel request, click save. 
So this is my toolbox. I'm putting all the tools that I need in my toolbox so I can create my application. So I'm going to do that. As you can see, it's still thinking. There you go. So now let's go back and create another variable. Travel request approval list. I don't have to put list at the end. I just, I don't know. That's just something I do. Data source, SharePoint. My parameter type is list. Choose the site I already created, travel request site. My list is travel request approval. And as we build our apps, if there's anything else that we've added or we've created, we can just come back in here and we can we can add it if we need to as an environment. So what's good? Why well, this is thinking? What's going to happen is what now when I move my solution, once I'm done, and I move my solution to the next environment, to the, my production environment. It's going to ask me to fill in these variables for my production environment, so I can point it to the right places. So that way, wherever it's used within the app I've created, it's pointing to the right resources. All right. So now that we have this all ready to go. Now let's go up here and click new. So we're going to be creating a canvas app. And then later on in another video, we're going to create our cloud app for our application. So let's go in here and create our canvas app. Travel request. We're going to click create. So now, now that we're in our app, we want to be able to point to our variables now to our list. So we're going to come over here to our data, data, and then we want to add data. And so we want to come down here to connectors and of course the SharePoint. Now, it shows you this, but this is not what we want. We want to click on advanced and this is our variable we created because we're going to be using our variable. So we click on travel request site and then we don't want the list. We want to go to advanced and pick the variable. See, connect using an existing environment variable. So I'm going to connect here and connect there. Click connect and boom. Now our application our power apps is using our variables it's using our environment variables so all we need to do now like i mentioned a few minutes ago is when we move to our new environment we just all we need to do is change the variables instead of coming in here disconnecting this and then connecting to our production environment variables you know so that's what we're going to do for now. This video is kind of long, so um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, when we create our workflow, our power, our power automate workflow is kind of the same concept. We just need to connect to the variables there and I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. So, all right, we've gotten all the hard stuff out of the way. So now in our next video, now we can get to the nitty gritty of building our application. Um, so we're going to do that in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Take care. Uh, please like the video if you find it useful and please share the video. It helps out with the algorithm of the channel. Thanks. Bye.